Vampire. Vampire is better than Werewolf, period. It's way higher risk, but way higher reward. The difference between Vampire and Werewolf primarily is that you stay in your same form as a Vampire. You have a couple negative effects and a couple of positive effects. First off, there's a skill line that you unlock. So how do you even get Vampirism? Basically, there's a couple different places in the world that you can get bit. Um, I think in Glenumbra's one, or in Reaper's Mark here, I have an add-on here, uh, Destinations. This is the altar after you get bit. This shows where like werewolves, werewolves and vampires hang out at, at night. You can get bit by an NPC, or there's so many people with bites right now that you can get it friendly. Uh, someone can bite you, and then you just go to this altar, do a quest, bang. You're a vampire. Same with werewolf. You get bit, go to an altar, do a quest, bang. You unlock the skill line here in the world, vampire. So the interesting thing about vampire here is that's one ultimate, two abilities. That's very, very good. Bat Swarm is probably the most powerful PvP ultimate in the game. It does tons of damage. Both morphs are really unique and interesting and has a very low cost after you're in stage four vampirism. Yes, there's different stages. Stage one, my little Dunmer here, you take more damage from fire attacks, but you have a higher rate of healing regeneration. Essentially, the meta right now is everyone go to stage four and use your ultimate at all times. That's kind of what the meta is. Now, these stages last for a certain amount of time, but most people keep in stage four and don't feed. So you can feed off NPCs like I did in the intro to lower your stages. Really, that just lessens a couple of the downsides of Vampire. Your character's going to look different. You're going to have crappy health regeneration. But that's about it. So the strengths are, you have one of the best abilities in the game, Bat Swarm Ultimates, and then another amazing ability, Mist Form. Basically, you take reduced damage and reduced healing. Like 75%. It's almost like you just can't die for three or four seconds. The more fun here on Elusive Mist is utterly amazing for PvP, and sometimes even PvE as well. The downside of Vampire is obviously you take way more damage from fire. Way more. 40% more. And you can only mitigate about half of that, so you're really going to take 20% regardless. So there's a couple ways to mitigate the damage, which is one. You can use Flame Resistance on a Necklace piece, that's what most people do. Now with the Champion system, you can also go into this tree, reduce your Flame damage here, or, like me, you can be a Dunmer and get some flame reduction through your passives. One way or another, you need to reduce your flame damage to about 20%. So you're going to have to ask yourself, is Vampire worth having that extra damage? So for some characters, like my guy, who is a Dunmer, I can reduce that damage to about 20%. And this is what you get out of it. Not only do you get those awesome skills, but you get some really cool passives. Increases your max stamina uh, ma stamina and magic by 10% at two ranks. That's incredible for endgame. Uh, Blood Ritual, this is the passive that basically gives you, allows you to bite someone else. Undeath reduces damage dealt to you when you fall below 30% health. Essentially, you just become much harder to kill. Though, I don't know how well this works. There's some confusion on how well it works. Um, increases health regeneration. Health regeneration is not too too big of an issue. Reason why? You're going to have self-healing with your ultimate. And then Darkstalker, one of the best PvP uh, passives in the game. Allows you to increase movement speed while sneaking. Essentially, you like almost run just as fast as in sneak as you do in normal. So Vampire overall, I love it. How do you increase it? All you do is put a skill on your bar, just like you normally would, and go get XP. The more skills you have on your bar, the faster you're going to level your skill line. I got this guy at, uh, I got Vampire at level 12 on my guy. The quest is around level 38 mobs, so if you're low level, it might take you a little while, but get it early. Reason why, it's going to take a long time to level up Vampire to 10, and, and stick with it. When you get Vampire early on, it is hard, because you're taking extra flame damage and you don't see the passives. Once you get it to 10, you get the skills, get the passes, you will rock. You just have to ask yourself, what content are you doing? If you're primarily in PvP, Vampire is amazing. If you're primarily or almost fully into PvE, I wouldn't go Vampire, because the fire damage is going to kill you and prevent you from doing a lot of the content. That being said, you can do City of Ash, you can do Veteran DSA as a Vampire Healer. We just ran it today as one. It's just going to take more effort, more time, and more concentration. So, that's what I think about Vampire. I personally love it for PvP. Let's move on to Werewolf. 
Now on to Werewolf. Werewolf's way different than Vampirism because you only get the benefit of Werewolf when you turn into a Werewolf itself. So you have an ultimate here, super high cost, 325. It allows you to turn into a Werewolf and use these special abilities. The duration and how long you turn into Werewolf depends on a lot of different things. What passives you have, so on and so forth. So Werewolf, ironically, isn't even remotely close to as good as Vampirism. Um, you do get a passive bonus to stamina regeneration while in, uh, in combat. So if you're not a vampire, you're almost better off just getting wearable just because you have a combat stamina regeneration. You don't even have to use the ultimate. You don't have to use any of the skills. You can just get the skill line and I'll unlock that. There's some debate whether you get that or not. I'm not going to go into that in this video. So the same thing applies with werewolf as does vampirism. You have to go get bit by a werewolf or a person that has werewolf. You go to the altar, do a really cool quest, so on and so forth. That's werewolf. Like I said, werewolf is not nearly as cool because you lose control of your character. You don't have the really awesome passes because it only applies while you're in the form. Now some of the abilities in werewolf transformation looks utterly awesome, but other than that, it's just not that effective. So, if you're asking me what would you rather be, well, Vampire has huge risk, huge rewards. The other thing about Werewolf is you only take increased poison damage when you're actually in the form. So that 15% stamina um, in combat really comes with no downside. So it's almost like there's no point in not being a Werewolf if you're not a Vampire, just for that stamina generation. So, I know I'm going to get a lot of comments in the video saying, Werewolf's great, or this is bad, or whatever. That's just my take on it. Try both of them out, at least to do the quest, even if you're an RPer or you don't want to do that sort of thing. It's a really, really cool quest they put a lot of time in. So now I want to show you what Werewolf looks like, speaking of how cool it looks like, because the skills might not be that good, it might not be that cool, but wow, does it look impressive. So after we get all that ultimate, here's Werewolf. Oh wow, does this look cool. I mean, it scales off your stamina, so if you're a stamina base user, some of these Werewolf abilities are pretty cool, it can hit hard. You look amazing, I mean, come on, you really look amazing. But the downside is, you lose all the access to your normal skills. Especially if you're a tank, you lose access to your taunts. Making Werewolf pretty much obsolete, as my terms for tanking. Oh wow, I killed a little critter. So, that's what Werewolf looks like. Really cool, but at 325 ultimate, it lasts that long, you lose a lot of your skills. Just not worth it. So, that was kind of a short video guide. Now, I, I have a million different um, videos on Werewolf and Vampire and actually using the ultimates and showing you what it looks like in PvP. But I just wanted to explain to you, essentially for new players, on if you even should think about getting it. So, starting out, if you're having trouble with magic or you want some really cool self-healing ultimate, you got to go Vampire, especially if you like to sneak. Werewolf, if you're an RP or you want some extra stamina regeneration, great. Werewolf's great for that. Overall, Vampire is just hands down better. Gives you more magic, gives you more stamina. Your character doesn't change. It does change the look of it. As you can see, Inferno Nugget here, looks, <laughs> he looks pretty ugly already. Werewolf doesn't change the look of your character, so if that's important to you, maybe use that. PvP, if you haven't tried Vampire out in PvP, you must do it. Devouring Swarm will change your life. I hope you learned something from this video. It was quick, short, dirty, just the way some of you like it. So try out Vampirism, try out Werewolf Bites, and let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching, and feel free to subscribe and let people know where you can find me at DeltiusGaming.com.